Hey everyone, Nigel and Luke here, and welcome to Crime Zone. Before we get to today's video, we wanted to announce that Crime Zone's official Patreon page is now live. In addition to ad free videos and other extras, patrons will also get access to weekly bonus videos for our Crimes of the Week and Crimes of the Week International series. So if you want even more Crime Zone content, head over to patreon.com slash crime zone for exclusive cases not featured in today's video. Authorities in Salt Lake County, Utah, say that a man has been arrested this week after he allegedly tried to enlist the help of a co-worker to kill five people by planting explosive devices in their vehicles. According to reports, 62-year-old Robert Jack Turvel was arrested on Wednesday, a little less than two weeks after police were first contacted by the co-worker he had tried to recruit. The co-worker told investigators that while he and Turvel were working together at a local sportsman's warehouse, Turvel began making a series of disturbing comments to him. He allegedly spoke about his messy divorce, started talking about what he believed were justifiable reasons to kill people, and said that he was, quote, able and willing to kill by any means necessary. The employee said that these disturbing comments culminated in Turvel sharing the details of his supposed plan, saying that he wanted to put an impact-triggered explosive substance known as Tannerite in the headrests of vehicles belonging to five different people. Turvel planned to shoot the headrests from a distance in order to set off the explosives and wanted to know if the co-worker would help. Authorities say that Turville's targets included family members, his estranged wife's divorce attorney, and members of his church. He reportedly planned to kill himself once it was all over. When police obtained a search warrant for Turville's house, they discovered a rifle, several handguns, ammunition, and two and a half pounds of the binary explosive he allegedly planned to use in the attack. He was taken to Salt Lake County Jail and has now been charged with five counts of criminal solicitation. He was also charged with two counts of contacting a victim while in custody after calling his wife and a family member after arriving at the jail. This week, authorities in McLennan County, Texas announced that they had recently arrested a drunk driver who was so intoxicated that he attempted to hand his beer to an officer during a traffic stop. The incident reportedly took place earlier this month, when two game wardens patrolling an area near Lake Waco attempted to pass a vehicle that was pulled off on the side of the road. As they got closer, however, they were cut off by a pickup truck traveling on the wrong side of the road. The driver steered back to the correct lane and attempted to wave the wardens past, but by this time, the two officers had allegedly become suspicious about the man's erratic driving and pulled him over. They quickly discovered that the man was in no state to be on the road. The man was so intoxicated that he wasn't able to figure out how to turn down the volume of his radio, and when asked what he was doing, could barely respond. Instead of answering their questions, he picked up a beer inside the vehicle and handed it to one of the officers. Needless to say, he subsequently failed the field sobriety test and was taken to the McLennan County Jail. At the time of this recording, authorities have declined to release the man's name. Authorities in Manchester, Connecticut say that the death of a 13-year-old girl who went missing late last week has officially been ruled a homicide. According to reports, Zaniah Wright disappeared sometime between the afternoon and evening on Thursday after her mother, Marissa Boos, left her in the care of a friend at the South Adams Apartments complex. Boos reported Zaniah missing around 8.30 p.m. after she came to pick her up and she was nowhere to be found. Roughly 12 hours later on Friday morning, Zaniah's lifeless body was found in a common area in the basement of the apartment complex. She had been strangled to death. At the time of this recording, few other details about the crime have been released, but police say they have identified a person of interest in the case, another juvenile who was with the 13-year-old at the time of her disappearance. A teenage boy reportedly lives in the apartment where Zaniah had been dropped off by her mother, but investigators have not clarified if this is the person of interest that they were referring to. No charges have yet been filed in the case. Representatives from the Colorado Springs Police Department say that a man accused of murdering his 26-year-old wife has been taken into custody, more than two years after the woman was last seen alive. 38-year-old Dane Kalungi was captured on Wednesday in Albuquerque, New Mexico, while allegedly trying to get onto the Kirtland Air Force Base, a little more than two weeks after police in Colorado issued a warrant for his arrest. 
Authorities have been investigating the disappearance of Kalungi's wife, Jepsi Amaga Kalungi, since April of 2019, after a friend called for a welfare check on her, but she could not be located. Concerned family members had also been unable to reach her for a couple of weeks. Police say they now believe that Jepsi was strangled to death by her husband on or around March 20th, the same time that she stopped responding to messages. The couple reportedly met each other on a dating site, and in 2017, Jepsi moved to the U.S. from the Philippines, and she and Kalungi got married. Around the time that Jepsi disappeared, the couple was going through a divorce. However, it's unclear whether this was ever finalized. Police believe that the murder was prompted by a domestic dispute between them. Jepsi's body still has yet to be found. Authorities in Lynn County, Iowa, say that a 20-year-old man has been arrested and charged with three counts of first-degree murder this week after he allegedly shot his parents and sister to death in their family home. According to reports, police were called to the residence at approximately 8.20 a.m. on Tuesday morning by the suspect, Alexander Jackson. Jackson claimed that he and his father had been shot by an intruder who intended to rob them. When authorities arrived at the scene, they found Jackson's 61-year-old father, Jan, dead, as well as his 68-year-old mother, Melissa, and his 19-year-old sister, Sabrina. All three had died from apparent gunshot wounds. Jackson, meanwhile, had suffered a single gunshot wound to the foot, which he claimed had resulted from a struggle over a weapon with the intruder. However, investigators were immediately skeptical of Jackson's explanation. The murder weapon appeared to be a 22 caliber Browning rifle that belonged to his father, which he said had been left out on the family fireplace overnight. There were also no signs of forced entry into the property or any sign that anything had been taken. Though no official motive for the crime has been given by police, it was reported that Jackson told them he had recently been given an ultimatum by his father to either get a job or move out of the house. After being treated for his injuries, Jackson was taken to the Lynn County Detention Center. His bond was set at $3 million. A preliminary hearing is scheduled for June 25th. An Ohio woman is reportedly facing two misdemeanor charges this week after she attacked two fast food employees because they wouldn't fulfill a custom drink order. The incident, which was partially captured on video, took place at a McDonald's in the city of Ravenna on Monday morning, when 44-year-old Sharice Cleveland became irate after employees told her they could not mix together three different flavors of a slushy drink. After loudly cursing at the employees and causing a scene, Cleveland proceeded to go behind the counter, where she punched and hit two of them while continuing to shout obscenities. At one point, she appeared to apologize for her behavior, saying that she had been up all day, only to rip the mask off of one of the workers' faces and throw several items on the counter to the ground. Cleveland's violent and ridiculous antics continued until police arrived and placed her under arrest. According to reports, this is not the first time Cleveland has faced legal troubles. In 2014, she was charged with felonious assault, kidnapping, and disrupting public service after she allegedly attacked her grandmother with a glass lamp. In that case, she ended up serving several months in prison. Authorities in Coos County, Oregon, say that a 30-year-old man is in custody this week after he killed three people and critically injured one other in three separate incidents. According to reports, the crime spree began on Friday when Owen Evan Nicholson killed his father Charles in his trailer at a casino RV park in North Bend. He then hit an elderly couple with his vehicle in the same RV park, while authorities say he was fleeing the scene. 74-year-old Anthony Oyster was killed after being struck by the vehicle, and his 73-year-old wife Linda remains in critical condition. Just minutes after his second murder, police say that Nicholson shot and killed 47-year-old Jennifer Davidson at a marijuana dispensary down the road. After murdering Davidson, Nicholson then drove to a parking lot in Springfield, Oregon, where he kidnapped 34-year-old Laura Johnson. He approached her while she was eating lunch in her car, and for the next 33 hours forced her to drive him east. After driving approximately 2,000 miles, Johnson convinced Nicholson to turn himself into police in Wisconsin. Luckily, Johnson managed to walk away from the incident unharmed. Nicholson is now facing three murder charges, as well as charges of second-degree attempted murder, first-degree assault, and failing to help a person injured in a traffic accident. At the time of this recording, he is currently awaiting extradition from Wisconsin to Oregon.
Authorities in Chicago say that four people are dead and four others are injured after a shooting at a residence in the city's Englewood neighborhood this week. According to reports, the incident may have taken place as two separate attacks at the house, both of which occurred in the early hours of Tuesday morning. Witnesses first reported hearing shots at 2 a.m., but it wasn't until the second round of gunfire after 5 a.m. that police arrived at the scene and discovered the bodies of the four victims. The deceased have been identified as 35-year-old Denise Mathis, 19-year-old Shermetria Williams, 28-year-old Ratanya Rogers, and 35-year-old Blake Lee. At the time of this recording, none of the names of the four other injured victims have been released, but it is said that at least one of them, a barber who cut hair out of the house, also lived there. At the current time, investigators have released very few details about the shooting to the public. It has been said that the violent incident was prompted by an argument, but the subject of that argument has not been released. Police have also not yet provided any details about the suspected shooter, their relationship to the property, or any of the victims. However, authorities have said that this is not the first time violent incidents have unfolded at the residence. In November of 2019, a man was found bleeding at the house after he had been shot several times during a large party there. The city subsequently filed a public nuisance suit against the homeowner in March of 2020, saying that he encouraged criminal activity at the residence. In the wake of this latest incident, the homeowner was identified as a Chicago police officer named Enrique Badillo. It was also reported that Badillo has been stripped of his police powers pending an investigation, but authorities have refused to comment on the nature of that investigation. That's it for this edition of Crimes of the Week. If you enjoyed our video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Crime Zone for more true crime content like this, making sure to hit the notification bell to stay up to date with our latest releases. Thank you for watching.